Why do people like film photography versus digital? It's kind of like an age old question these days, but it's easy. It's because you get the sauce, you know what I'm saying? And it's not like I'm, I'm saying real sauce, but they do it because it's a craft and it's an art style that requires what we would call something that I didn't get a whole lot of, tender love and care, okay? It requires a special amount of work to get something that, while on paper, can look similar to the faster and more easier to make thing. Once you actually jump into the weeds and kind of look at the details of it and the intricacies, you can see that the tiny details are what make film so much fun. It's why people like shooting film so much. And it does look just a little bit different that even if you have the Adobe Premiere Pro raw thing going on, you still really can't make it exactly one for one. Now, I couldn't do it. I got posts to make on, you know, Instagram. You know what I'm saying? I can't. We're not doing the film stuff. I barely have enough patience to like sit down for 10 minutes. There are car platforms that are out there that are a little bit like film photography. When you look at them, you know that they're a little bit dated. You know that on paper, they're probably a little bit tougher to love, a little bit harder to understand. But you know that just like film photography, they got a cult following if you look hard enough. And trust me, these car guys and gals have a cult following, okay? These guys and gals are the cars or maybe the trucks or maybe the SUVs of a combination of some sort of platform. These are the cars that brew their own beer and have their own handmade oil for their own handlebar mustache. We're talking about the rise and then the fall, all while trying to figure out exactly what happened to station wagons. I could really go for some more coffee. Speaking of which, I do want you to click the link below and go find the baddest wagon you possibly can in our gallery, which is the largest aftermarket car gallery in the world, all right? Drop a link below in the comment section and I'm gonna convince Trey or whatever person I need to to ship out like, I don't know, a t-shirt or something. Forever's got the coolest link to the coolest wagon in the gallery in the comment section below. I'm dead ass serious. Open up that new tab, baby, not incognito, and go check it out. Trust me, I know what you're doing over there. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to check us out over at fitmentindustries.com in general. Plus, we also quick delivery now because we're practically not Amazon, but better. All right. Trey can take breaks. He can go have tacos if he'd like. He can play a game of ping pong. No bottle pee in here. You know what I'm saying? Station wagons have been near and dear to our grandparents' heart for quite a long time. Motor Trend tells us that the first Ford wagon was brought to us in this wonderful blue world back in the 1910s and was for quote unquote, not even joking, transporting a weekend party to the yacht, to the stables, to the lodge or the cottage by the seashore. It has been ideal since it enables the party to travel in mass, taking supplies with them in comfort. I don't know how they managed to talk like that back in the day, but it does sound way cooler than the way that we talk these days. Now I do say good sir, let us jump into the wooden elongated craft from the Jacobite train and enjoy an engaging partying of 10 to the cabin if you will. This was pretty much what it was. It was nothing more than just a pretty large car that was taking the ideas of essentially a train that you could put a bunch of people into and transport them to a different location. If they figured how they could do that with a big ass car, they wanted to make it happen. And there's people that were like, I do say good Rogers. That sounds like a splendid idea. Grab the coal and let's go. There was, I don't know what accent that was, but over time people realized that they really liked being able to pack half their home into the back of a car along with like 10 to 14 bodies and transport them from any which known location they could possibly want along with maybe two children and an actual dog. You had vehicles like the 1956 Rambler that had the pillarless sedan look that was as long as a bus. It looked fantastic. The Rambler is a good looking vehicle. And if you've never seen a Rambler in real life, you need to go find one. Go to Iola. You'll probably see one or two. Okay. Look at the size of that thing. The Ford Country Squire, the best headlight design ever made, particularly the 1978 model. You want to talk about Miatas having cool headlights? All right. This one, I think takes the cake and is better in every way. Okay. Look at the wood, the green, the Clark Griswold-esque styling throughout. You wonder why these are so ugly? It's because they were so beautiful. I'm just telling you that if you were to slam it on the ground, it'd win almost every single car show out there. And not only that, you'd be able to pack literally your entire apartment with you in case you didn't manage or want to come back. And that was just what was so interesting about the station wagons. Not only were they functional, not only were they sexy, not only were they kind of just expensive, but they were actually really well designed. Back in the day, these station wagons, these car manufacturers were putting an absolute ton of time, research and development, technology, comfort, and all these sort of things into station wagons. Station wagons had 
found to be loved by a multitude of mul market demographics and family types. I mean, really, it checked a lot of boxes for a lot of different people. With the cargo volume, you could put like, lit I'm not kidding, 12 to 14 bodies in a wagon at least, and they'd all have a great time to the cabin. Because of the typical gas spring hatch and width, you could fit quite a bit of opportunity to not only fit a lot of stuff, but to fit a lot of width. You know, you could put a lot of wide boys in there. You could take Dakota, flip them sideways, and then just push them in. He'd probably fit, okay? I don't want to keep doing the body count comparison, but when you really do look at some of these wagons, it is a substantial amount of volume in the back of that car. Now, either way, it was revolutionary for the automobile industry, and one that would even argue that people fell in love with traveling and the lifestyle of, of, of going camping and doing those things because of wagons and what wagons were able to do for people. It allowed people to experience the perks of traveling without buying an unreliable truck that just couldn't fit people and you could also add stuff. It, it allowed you to travel without having to worry about a train or an airplane or anything like that. You could just literally jump in this vehicle with your family and everything that you needed and go wherever you wanted. It was the feeling of freedom, okay? And if Chevy Chase likes wagons, everyone should like wagons. But for some reason, this elongated sedan, this human stocking stuffer of a car seemed to die immediately going into the 80s, never to return to its prior shoebox design loving audience that so many people knew. And everybody loved this guy. Everybody loved the station wagon. He was a cool kid on the block. He was the fancy party man. And then all of a sudden, turns out he just didn't have any friends and he never heard from him again after high school. So what exactly happened to the station wagon? It's a great question, you. Is it because of gas prices? Hell no. Is it because I owned one? Maybe. I had a B7, A4, big turbo, manual. It was awesome. It was super duper sick. All right, but there's probably a little bit more going on here. So let's actually jump into why these beautiful cars that I think should come back will likely never, ever, 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 ever come back. The first major decline in station wagons came at the introduction of a new type of vehicle, something that made soccer moms cry and dads convince their friends that they actually don't even have a car anymore because they never wanted to get sighted driving one of these bad boys. It was like the old early 2000s joke, if you were male, that you didn't own one of these. And it was called the Chrysler minivan. Now, take a station wagon, improve its body count, hauling capabilities, and remove literally every other cool thing about station wagons, and you pretty much get a minivan. I mean, they were functional, and that was about it. If you actually looked at any sort of styling cues, they did not have them because they did not want them. Over time, people began to evolve from buying station wagons to just buying minivans. The functionality of a minivan started to really show itself that instead of carrying a bunch of people and stuff, they'd rather just carry a bunch of people. Now, the K platform in its minivan trim began to outsell the station wagon counterpart, and because of something called the US Cafe, I don't know if it's actually Cafe, it's called the CAFE or something because it's an acronym, so you can't use whatever. It's called the Corporate Average Fuel Economy. It's what allowed minivans and SUVs UVs to have less stringent laws around miles per gallon versus their station wagon counterparts. So while the station wagon was coming down with more restrictions from essentially the cafe, the trucks, minivans, and SUVs could continue to have gas mileage for a good long while. So while station wagons stayed relatively popular in countries too, that also didn't have the same amount of efficiency regulations, it was still enough to push away consumers in the United States. That's why you really start to see European cars like Audis, BMWs, and Mercedes, particularly older station wagons, continue to be made into the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, whereas a lot of the domestic stuff is practically just dead. And in the United States, all we really have are SUVs. Station wagons like the Chevrolet Caprice is dead. The Buick Roadmaster is MIA, okay? The Ford Taurus wagon is ugly. Also axed, that one's probably deserved. The Focus station wagon, not today and probably not ever coming back, okay? What was left was predominantly like, really, in all honesty, Subaru wagons, which fit them best because of how their production cycle pretty much worked out and how their frames and all that sort of stuff, they pretty much could make it without much cost. If you really see a station wagon though, and it's a Subaru, eh, I would uh, bargain, I, I push that more towards the SUV. Either way, really the only large station wagons left were the niche ones. Real European luxury car manufacturers continued to make them and produce them in their US export business, even though it was still a very small amount. So much so that even some of the European companies couldn't even export these cars because nobody in the US was really buying them. Mostly for the crazy mom and dad that had a Chevy Chase like person as their idol. But these wagons were typically coming in like the highest trim options you possibly could. Really only targeting a very small select group of people. You had things like the Mercedes-Benz E63 AMG and so much more that were like that. Even Cadillac had a CTSV wagon, which was super, super fun, and then they ended up killing it anyway. Even with these lower cost wagons, they really didn't do much and that no matter who went at it, the market reached the same conclusion. Nobody was buying the wagons. The CTSV wagon was super cool, but only for people like you and people like me. So what happened to station wagons? I mean, that's a really good question, but they kind of just in 
in all oh, hindsight got red wedding like the starks by the likes of minivans first and suv second when they tried to make a comeback it was already pretty much too late because the audience had gotten comfortable with ugly bubble bean looking gray ass minivans sorry hold on i'm not i don't have a problem with minivans i just i don't know which way i put suvs or minivans what makes this story so interesting though is that even though the numbers tell auto manufacturers to not make these platforms anymore people are still doing it volvo has their wagon which i think looks great my wife doesn't want to buy one audi brought back their rs6 avant also badass slightly scared about the depreciation mercedes is off destroying the wagon world with their amgs and even what's their name bmw is coming out with an m3 wagon it goes on and so on and so on and so on and, and i truly believe that the only reason they're doing it is because of well to be honest probably us the the automotive enthusiast and i think that's really the only thing they ever plan on doing with it, that thing but what do you think should wagons deserve to die or do you think they'll finally make a comeback when people get sick of suvs all looking the same let us know below and if you're looking for aftermarket wheels tires or suspension be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com i'm alex from fitment industries and we will see you later peace